Good morning. Welcome back. I hope you had a really good week. Did you? Did you do anything fun or exciting or anything new? Well, pretty soon school will be starting and there'll be a lot of changes and new things happening there. So just want to let you know your Sunday school teachers are holding you up in prayer and just pray that this new adventure will go smoothly and it will feel normal in you know quick enough time and so we'll have to see how it goes but i do want to let you know that we did have our meeting at church and right now we're looking at um sunday school somewhat starting in october maybe we're just going to see how everything goes and make sure we can do it safely when we start bringing people in later so just hang in there and we'll see um, what will be happening later on but today our lesson is a continuation of Daniel now you have to realize Daniel left Jerusalem when he was a teenager say 17 or so and Daniel was there I think well close to 90 um, in Babylon so he was basically at that place for 70 years okay so he um saw many things happening at that time so we're going to be talking about one of those times that he was very humble and interpreted a dream for another king so before we begin let's go into a word of prayer our heavenly father i just want to thank you and praise you for this day and i just thank you for this lesson and Lord, we just ask for your help by your spirit to help us to understand it and also to put this lesson into practice into our own lives. And I just want to thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Many years have passed since King Nebuchadnezzar had taken Daniel and his friends from their home in Jerusalem. And you remember the first lesson that we had? It was about self-discipline. And that was when um, the king offered food to Daniel and his friends to eat from his table. That was also used, used to worship idols. And Daniel and his friends knew eating such food would be a sin to them. And then they said, well, let us just eat water and vegetables and they were the guard was kind of afraid the one who was in charge of them but when they were done they were stronger and did much better than the other people who ate the food from the king's table so the next thing we had was um courage and it was the three friends of daniel remember um some people wanted to trick them and get them in trouble so they said to the king Nebuchadnezzar to build a statue and he did, well, he had a dream and he built the statue Statue, and he wanted people to bow down and they saw that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego did not bow down. So they went and tattled on them to the king and the king was so upset, especially when they refused to bow down the second time and he threw them into the furnace, but they survived. They, and the thing was this, no matter what was happening to them, whether um, King Nebuchadnezzar said, you are going to die for this, they had the courage to stand up for God and for their beliefs. And for us, for that, when we have that courage, we need to ask God for his help and he will supply us with that courage that we need. So we have nebuchadnezzar and he was the main king for a lot of the stories here in daniel and he ruled and when he died he died a very peaceful sleep which was very uncommon in ancient times <laughs> usually you were taken over um killed um assassinated there were other ways that usually um other people want to take the throne so but ne king nebuchadnezzar was on that throne for a very long time there's been after he died his kingdom lasted 25 years after him 
And this is the last king that we will be talking about of this time period. Okay, this king was called Belshazzar. Okay, um, Belshazzar was um, a king who was very prideful and he was having a feast. And at his feast, there was a thousand people and he also went to brag. So during the dinner, he decided to have all of the goblets from the Jewish temple be brought to him and his guests. And do you remember when Nebuchadnezzar years before took over Jerusalem, they took everything. There were thousands of pieces of items that were used in worship and to glorify God in the temple. And they took all that to Babylon. Well, this King Belshar decides to use it in this banquet. And as they are using these precious items from the temple, they are glorifying their idols. Well, God is not doing well with this. So here is our first picture. And they're having a grand old time. Do you see that? Well, all of a sudden, as they are in this celebration, this hand just appears out of nowhere and starts writing these words on the wall. And he was like, what is this? So he quickly called for his wise men and he wanted these men to explain this mysterious message to him. And he says this to them, whoever tells me the meaning of these words shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Well, of course, no one knew what these words were. And here I have them written here. Many, but not many, many, Tekel and Farzan, Farzan, okay? So what's going on here? Well, the queen of Belshazzar remembers Daniel and she remembers a time of Nebuchadnezzar when he was very prideful and would not give God the credit for what Nebuchadnezzar had accomplished. And there was a moment that Daniel interpreted a dream of a Nebuchadnezzar's and it came true. And it was a way that the Lord humbled Nebuchadnezzar. Well, this queen says, go get Daniel. He will help you to interpret these words. So Daniel comes and there were two statements that Daniel said to this king. Okay. The king offered him the gifts that he said he would give to anyone who could interpret the dream. But Daniel humbly refused these gifts and he humbly decided to tell the king what these words meant. But first, here's the first thing, Daniel reminded the king how God gave Nebuchadnezzar greatness and majesty, but King Nebuchadnezzar refused to worship God and he was very prideful. So God took away his kingdom and that's what he said in the dream, your kingdom will be taken from you. And then until he realized Nebuchadnezzar that God was in charge, then he got his kingdom back. So Daniel spoke to Belshazzar and said, look, you have not humbled your heart. You have proudly gone against God by using these special cups from God's temple. You and your officials have been drinking in them while praising your idols. You have not honored God. And God who gives you life has sent this hand to write this message. And this is what the message said. This first word means numbered. Tekel 
means weighed, and parsen means divided. Okay, divided. So numbered here is God has numbered the days of your reign, and it's going to be brought to an end. The weighed part is you have been weighed in the balances and you have not measured up and divided. Your kingdom has been divided and has been given to the Medes and the Persians. Now, if you know anything about ancient civilizations, there were always civilizations conquering one another. And at this time, this is the end of Babylon. After this, Babylon will not um, be there anymore. We will have the Medes and the Persians, and they will rule in that area. So Daniel boldly told the king God's message, and he was honored by Belshazzar. And that very night, Belshazzar's enemy, Darius the Mede, invaded Babylon, and Belshazzar was killed, and his kingdom ended just as the handwriting on the wall said. Wow. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Well, today we learn that Daniel demonstrated humility. And say that word after me. Do you, humility. Do you know what humility means? Hmm. Humility is recognizing we need God and are willing to do what he says. You know? And sometimes that might be tough, especially when we don't want to do what he says, but we are to do what he says. And humility is that. What did Belshazzar say or do that showed his pride? Mm. Remember what he did? He called for all of the um, cups from the temple to be brought in and they drank wine from them and talked and praised about their gods, their idols, God did not find that in good taste. He was not pleased. So how was Daniel's attitude different from Belshazzar? Hmm? Did he approach the king as a know-it-all or say, hmm, told you so? No, he didn't. He was simply giving God's message. And that's all he was to do. King Belshazzar lived a life as pride as seen through his attitudes and actions toward God. Daniel's attitudes and actions demonstrated the complete opposite. Daniel honored God with his actions and he knew he needed God's help to do what is right. Because God was with him, Daniel could tell God's message to King Belshazzar. He told it with boldness and respect. Our attitudes should be one of humility, like Daniel's, and not one of the like of pride of the king. You know, you and I will never witness a handwriting on the wall like Belshazzar and thousands of others at his feast that day. But we do have the Bible where God shows us the right way. Why is it so important to God for his followers to have humility? Why is that so important? Well, when we're filled with humility, we will care about what God thinks. Being humble doesn't mean that you have to be quiet or weak. Daniel was bold to speak up to the king because he was doing what God wanted. Well, let's look. There's another scripture I have written here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. And I want you to listen to what um, they are saying to us. Okay, here we go. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you, clothe yourself with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So what does this verse tell us to do? We are to put on and wear humility. Like we would put on clothing every day. Every day we wear an attitude of humility 
we think about what we can do for God and others, we won't be focused only on what we want. God will be pleased. Well, what does God give to the humble? Hmm? Well, if you think about it, as we do God's will, he will be pleased and lift us up. So, do you remember we've had our character traits here too? We've had our character traits. We had self-discipline when we make ourselves do what we know is right. Then we had courage doing the right thing, even when we're afraid. And today is humility, recognizing we need God and are willing to do what he says. So that's just a little reminder. But do you remember our memory verse that we're talking about this month? It's from Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. And it says, even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. So what do your words and actions reveal about you? What are they showing other people? Do you think you are known for having humility or pride? Daniel was known as a man with an excellent spirit and with knowledge and understanding. Daniel knew God had given him abilities and he used them to speak God's message. God has given each of us abilities and he wants us to use them to speak his message to others who we come to know or even strangers. He wants us to do that. So to recap, how did Belshazzar sin? Remember, he took the precious goblets from the, God, from the Lord's temple and he was drinking wine in them and praising his own idols with them. Do you think he recognized his pride? I don't think so. He probably thought it was normal. He probably thought that was what he was supposed to do. I think he recognized his pride toward the end. Especially when his dream came true, don't you think? Sometimes we cannot see our wrong attitude or actions of pride as sin. So let's look at some statements to help us examine what we think, say, or do. Okay, so I'm going to read these little snippets. And we're going to say, are they pride or humility? Okay, let's see. Here's a statement somebody can say. I am the best on my team. Hmm. Pride or humility? You may be the best one on your team, but your pride will keep you from seeing that it takes a team to win. So be careful with that. How about, no one can do it as good as me. Hmm. Pride or humility? It is good to be great at something, but to brag about it and give the attitude as I am better than you and not many people want to be around someone like that, right? Here's another one. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? Is that pride or humility? Mm. Admitting when we are wrong is good for friendships, but the first to admit your part when you've hurt someone. So be the first. That's humility. And I think that is so important today because not many people want to admit that they are wrong. And a lot of people have difficulty saying, I am sorry. Will you forgive me? I was totally off for, you know, I was not, it's not good. I was wrong. You know, a lot of people don't want to say that they're sorry. And I think that is something that might need practice, okay? Because sometimes we just want to deny that we did anything wrong. How about this one? You know, of all the work I did, I deserve the credit. Pride or humility? Pride. Everyone deserves recognition, but you must always remember that it is God who enables you. So how can you use the talents that God has given you? and to honor him by. Okay, here's another statement. 
I will do whatever you need me to do. Is that pride or humility? Okay, let me say, I will do whatever you need me to do. It's humility. A submissive attitude attracts others to you. Jesus was a servant. Even though he created the world, we are not too good to do any job. No job is beneath us. So we should do whatever we need to do to help someone or to care for someone or to make sure our family's good. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, here's a good one. Please help me to do what's right today, God. Prideful or humility. Every day we need to ask God's help. Say prayers throughout the day when we are tempted to sin. God loves to help those who seek. Okay, he does. I don't need God's help. I can do this on my own. Is that pride or humility? That is pride. Are you sure the job might get done, but acting like you don't need God is a wrong attitude? Okay, I'm too busy to try and do that for him. Ooh, pride or humility? Pride. Are you really too busy or do you not want to be bothered with that person? That shows an attitude of, my time is more important than you. Okay, here's another one. Let's work together to fix this. Wow. Pride or humility? Humility. Together we may find a solution quicker, and working together helps people become friends. Listening to one another's ideas will help you learn more. And this is our last one. I said I wanted to do it my way. Is that pride or humility? It is pride. You know, you don't always have to have the best way to do things. Listen to others and work together rather than demanding your own way. You know, which of these answers are you most likely to give? Think about it. You know, you don't have to answer this question out loud, but I want you to think about your answer. Do you want to choose humility or do you want to choose pride? What do you want to be known for? Remember this verse, even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. So it's something to think about. <clears throat> so here is your next step. It is to choose to have the right attitude of humility in every situation. Ask God to help you when you are struggling to make the right choice. And that's what the Holy Spirit is for. If you're having a difficult time or find yourself not wanting to make the right choice, you need to ask for his help to give you the strength and the, the wisdom to choose the right choice every time. So as this week, um, I hope you can take the time to spend it in God's word and also for you to look around and see God working in your life and also to keep God in the front of your mind. So when it comes to making those difficult choices, you can make the right choice. And remember, always ask him for his help because he's there waiting and willing to help you. So I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, take care of yourself. Be kind to others. And remember, Jesus loves you and you are so important to him. So until next Sunday, have a great time. Take care and I will see you back here.